Chris Yan. Great to have you on. Great to be with you. Okay, so ahead of this report, you were estimating uh, non-farm payrolls rising 250,000 for the month. We got 253,000. I guess walk us through uh, your takeaways. I think the takeaway is that it's a strong report pretty much across the board. You look at the payroll number that was obviously on the high side, the unemployment rate edged down uh, to a new uh, multi-decade low, at least on an, on an unrounded basis, and you had a strong wage number. Now, underneath the surface, there are always you know, some caveats and qualifications around that, but the, the basic takeaway is that the labor market is very resilient, and that is providing support to household real income, which is important at a time when we're concerned about the drag from tighter credit conditions. This is a reason for strong labor market, strong real income growth is a reason for why we still think a recession is not the most likely outcome. So if you're the Fed, you're coming off of a meeting and what is potentially your last hike. Uh, earlier this week, you look at this report and, and you think what, given the fact that wages did rise and the fact that the unemployment rate did tick lower? Well, I think our forecast is that this was the last hike. And, uh, you know, if you look at the press conference, Chair Powell said twice that the changes in the statement were meaningful. Mm -hmm. So I think the message was probably they're on hold at the June meeting. But I think a hike at the June meeting is considerably more likely than, than a cut. So if you look at market pricing, well, market pricing is for very, very little. And there is, you know, I think, a possibility that the data are going to evolve in a way and the news about financial frictions is going to evolve in a way that would give you a cut. But our baseline is we stay at five to five and a quarter well into 2024 before the funds rate gradually comes down.